Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and today I'd like to show you how to turn your normal old circular saw into a fully functioning track saw. Let me show you how on Modern Builds. Let's get started. The first thing I did was lay out a new piece of one and a half inch thick polystyrene insulation as a cutting board. Then I cut about two inches off of one end so that I would have plenty of room to clamp a straight edge to my half inch thick MDF. With my speed square, I found that my circular saw takes up about six inches of space. So I'll be making an eight inch wide track so that I'll have plenty of room to clamp to it later on. I used a painted MDF 1x6 as my straight edge, but if you don't have anything laying around your shop, you can always have them cut down a piece on their panel saw at Home Depot. After my 8 inch wide piece was cut, I cut two more pieces at exactly one inch, and then one more at about an inch and a quarter. This will be on the side that I trim as a final step. The last piece I cut is about three inches wide, and that's what I'll be using to clamp my track down to the piece I'm cutting. I applied a liberal amount of Gorilla Glue wood glue and then spread it out with a plastic scraper to make sure all of the surfaces were covered. Then I used spring clamps to line up the edge of that piece to the factory edge of my 8 inch piece which I know is straight. Next I used one of those 1 inch pieces that I cut as a spacer for the other 1 inch piece that I'll be gluing down. Instead of using clamps I used my Ryobi 18 volt brad nailer so that I didn't have to worry about clamps being in the way and I could continue working. After removing the spacer, I used a chisel to clean any glue squeeze out before putting the spacer back in place on the other side of the runner I just glued down. This is the one and a half inch wide oversized piece that I had cut. I made sure not to close the gap on this spacer with too much pressure so that it will still be able to slide when it's attached to the circular saw later on. This is the quarter inch MDF project panel that I bought that I'll be building the circular saw base plate with. The first step was to use my circular saw to make marks, then cut out a piece that is the exact same size as the existing aluminum base plate. Then, after removing the battery so I didn't cut off any fingers, I used my hot glue gun to attach that base plate to the aluminum one so that I could drill holes without it moving. And last time I was at Harbor Freight, I picked up a tap and die set that I'll be using to make threaded holes so that I can use machine screws to make the base plate removable and reattachable so that the circular saw doesn't have to be dedicated as a track saw. I had never tapped threads before, but it was really a simple process. I just screwed the bit through there, and as I did, it cut threads into the hole that I made with the drill bit. After that, I used a countersink to make sure that the heads of my machine screws would sit beneath the surface of the MDF so that everything sat nice and flat. After cutting the slot for the blade, I grabbed that one inch runner that I was using for a spacer earlier and I cut them into the pieces that I'll be making the runners with on the base plate. Whenever you're attaching your runners, make sure and use the blade for your reference for square rather than the edges of your base plate. That way you know it's going to track straight and cut square. And notice the fit isn't so tight that I can't run the runner between the blade and the runner that I just clamped down. I'll be attaching the second runner in place so that I know it's a perfect fit for the track that I just built. After applying some wood glue, I added a couple dabs of hot glue so that whenever I put my circular saw down on that runner, it's held in place and then that wood glue can hold permanently. And my last step was to put a battery in, lower my blade, and trim my track to its final width. Really quickly, I'd like to give a huge thanks to this video sponsor, RZ Mask. If you're a fan of my channel, you've seen me wear the M2 mask for a really long time. But if you've been watching my recent videos, you've probably seen me use the M2.5 mask with two straps. Originally, I thought this extra strap would be a little inconvenient, but to my surprise, it still goes on just as fast and just as easy. The big benefit to it is it has a tighter seal around the nose because of this extra pressure. So if you're someone like me with a big nose, you might actually like this mask a little bit better. And right now, if you follow the link down in the description and use the code MODERNBUILDS at checkout, you can get 15% off your purchase. So thanks RZ Mask. Now let's get back to this project. I'm really 
excited to have this jig because now I don't need to measure the distance from the blade to the edge of the bed of my circular saw. I can just measure to the mark I want to cut, line up my jig, and go from there. Of course, I need to keep in mind the thickness of the blade depending on what side I want to cut and what side I want to keep, but this is going to make breaking down plywood so much faster. Now, I know some people are going to think that there's no way this is completely accurate and straight, but I got a six foot straight edge and I tested it out and there is absolutely no overhang or underhang. That means it's straight. And to test that out even further, I made a version on my table saw where I did all of my cuts using the fence. I assembled everything the exact same way and when I put it together and tested it out, it didn't work any better or worse. And with that piece, I cut it into four foot lengths and just over a two foot length to cut shorter pieces. That way I'm not dragging around this eight foot long jig if I'm cutting down a sheet of plywood widthwise. When I was planning everything out, I forgot to take into account this quarter inch plate on the bottom of the circular saw. Luckily, it still cuts through three quarter inch material, but it doesn't have any extra room. Now, if I was doing this all over again, I would use this same quarter inch material for the base of the track itself. It would still have plenty of strength and still be a really straight cut. The other option would be to use a seven and a half inch saw rather than a six and a half inch saw. Regardless, with this saw and this jig, you can still cut three quarter inch material, but not anything bigger. But ultimately, this is for cutting plywood anyway, so three quarter of an inch is all I need. I wanna give one more huge thanks to RZ Mask for sponsoring this video. Make sure and check out their links down in the description. Thanks everybody for watching. Let me know down in the comments if you enjoy these shop style projects. If you do, I'll keep doing them. If you don't, maybe I'll stop, maybe I'll keep doing it, who knows? And if you're not already, make sure and click that subscribe button right over here so you can stay updated every time I post a new project video. And speaking of project videos, two more will pop up on the screen right here. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time. Watch them. On Modern Builds, why are you so aggressive? <laughs> Bye everybody.